Hello, Hordlings! I'm here to do a Jacksaw Jack Meadery review from Jacksaw Brewing. Mr. Jacksaw Jack has sent me some of his homebrew mead. Six bottles, in fact. And we are going to start with Mead First Brew, as he is labeled. Now, I've gone ahead and created these on Untap the app, and I have actually dubbed this one Genesis since it was his first one. Dubbed the second one Exodus. The reason this is a still shot is because the first video got corrupted somehow, and so I had to voice over this picture that I have of it. But I was trying to show off my awesome fucking beer glasses. So unfortunately, in this particular video, you won't get to see the full 360 circumference of my awesome beer zombie glass. Anyways, this first brew was pretty good. It was definitely drinkable. I finished it all off. Uh, this first night, I had three bottles uh the first three bottles um and i will uh say that they were the best three bottles the brew one brew two okay. and the apple brew as well um shut the fuck up work i'm trying to do a goddamn mead review here on my break um but anyways this one was uh, definitely drinkable uh you could tell there was uh a nice amount of alcohol in it. I was pretty lit after the three bottles. Um, I want to venture to guess these meads are around the 12 to 14% AB, ABV area. Anyways, this was brew number one, and let's go ahead and uh, cut to the videos I made of the rest. Oh, yeah, folks, we're back for bottle number two from the Jack Saw Jack Mead Delivery. This one is simply called Second Brew. I'm, at, I'm assuming this is the uh, second batch. Uh, I'll be drinking this one out of my one of my favorite glasses, the uh, Zelda Link. They call this one Link to the Hop instead of Link to the Past. It's a wraparound glass, something I've become very fond of. This glass is awesome. Got a little link down there, fucking some chickens up. Let's see how Jack Saw's mead. Ooh, this is super clear. Even more translucent than the first batch. We're getting fucked up, folks. Uh, I've already finished the first bottle, and uh, I don't know. I mean, you guys got to remember I'm pretty pretty resilient. Uh, I drink a lot of high ABV stuff, and I drink a lot, so. <laughs> Ain't gonna lie. Let's check this out. The aroma. It's a lot more subtle. Hello. Oh. Yeah, this is better. This is this is good. The last stuff was something I would kind of expect taste-wise from a homebrew, but this is something where if I actually bought this off a shelf, I would uh, I'd, I'd probably buy it again. Try another little sip here. Your palate will change in a matter of seconds from the first sip to the second. Oh man, it's fucking delicious though. While we're here, let's take a look around the office. Let's see what the game board has got going on. We're doing some Song of Fire and Ice, uh, the Game of Thrones, George R. R. Martin, Song of Fire and Ice is the actual name of the series. Uh, putting together some armies for that. That is the Free Folk Army, and uh, I've already started painting the Lannisters, as you can see. There's a regiment of guardsmen. Still working on them. You can see where I need to touch up a bit on the, the flock, but of course they're all removable as your units get killed. We got some halberders, some cavalry in the back. Uh, this is the mountain, Tyrion, Cersei, Jamie, some alternate sculpts. Got some crossbow men there in the back, and these are the pyromancers. 
that will cast the dragon fire in battle. Um, but still working on them. Got a couple of the Hellbirders painted, and there's also some heavy, some heavy units. These are the Mountains Men. Um, painting some Ravenloft miniatures for the Ravenloft board game. This is a uh, zombie dragon. These are all super, super quick jobs that I do. 20, 30 minutes tops for a miniature. Just a simple base coat with some shading. This guy I'm a little proud of. I use a special glue called Uhu Glue, U-H-U. And that's how I got the drool to come out of his mouth all the way down to the ground. Uh, and the tendon sinew coming from his arm to his knee. That's all done with a glue. Uh, obviously you need to be delicate with that. that. You can break those pretty easily. But it's a really nice effect. Uh, closer look at the paint station. I actually 3D printed all the racks that you see these paints on. Those are all 3D printed. These wood ones I paid for, same with those, but now that I have a 3D printer, a little bit more accessibility. Also painting some uh, figures for our D&D game. Not one I'm running, one my friend Tony is running. So, Blue Dragonborn. Uh... It's our friend uh, Matt, I believe, who's been in a couple of our videos, our board game videos. This is Eric's Dwarf Barbarian. Uh, this is our Rogue, of course, all in black and hard to see. Uh, still working on the Bard, so that is Scarlet's character, still incomplete, just kind of... Uh, Got the cloak in red and more work to do. And last but not least, we have my character, who is a tiefling warlock. See if I can get a better shot on that. It's kind of hard to hold. Whoops! Drop the motherfucker. Kind of hard to hold and get in focus. But that is Torment. Named him after the game, Planescape Torment. He is uh, raising a zombie out of the ground. God damn it. I'm shooting this all with my phone because I'm lazy. So that's some of the stuff I've been painting. Anyways, this video is about the mead. Back to the mead. This is a wonderful mead, Jack. So I want to go ahead and tell Jack thanks for sending this great stuff out to me. we got four more bottles to go and four more glasses to reveal. Anyways... Gonna upload these to Untapped as well, so if any of you have tried any of these from Jacksaw, we can make it official. Download the Untapped app, U-N-T-A-P-P-D. Add the game hoarder to your friends. I go by the name Ron Stock, obviously, on Untapped, and you will see the little red uh, guardian face as my avatar, as always. Anyways. All I'm right, going to get back to painting, back and I'll see you on the next mead. We've had the first brew and the second brew, which I have aptly named Genesis and Exodus on Untapped. Now we are moving on to the apple mead that Jack saw Jack has sent the game order. Let's take a sniff a lift. Oh, yeah. Ooh, eh, today's... Uh, or this beer, this mead's featured glass is, of course, the Fallout Hops glass. It's one of my faves. Again, a lighter. This glass is dirty, by the way, so you are going to see some. I'll go ahead and educate you, as I have learned, about how to spot a dirty glass. Well, you see all those bubbles? They are clinging to the side of the glass because of dirt. You can actually go down there and kind of wipe them off, but that doesn't really mean your glass is clean. However, if you're out in a public place and your glass looks like this, that's a dirty glass. Uh, I pulled this, I actually did a quick rinse on this, but um, rinsing with hot water or whatever and just kind of shaking it out, that's not always gonna do the trick. You actually got to 
get a little bit of soap in there, scrub it, and then get a nice dry cloth to truly clean a glass properly. Anyways, let's test out the apple. Oh, yeah. Welcome to the apple get out. Ah. Got kind of a cidery feel almost, but definitely the meat is there. Excellent. It's fucking excellent. Bravo, Jaxa. Excellent. Um, yeah. Kind of has an aftertaste of cat piss, but not in a bad way. Good way. Somehow. But, um, yeah, kind of dries your tongue out. Very dry, dry finish. Uh, super delectable up front, though. <sighs> so far, the three meats I've tried have all been different and in, in very uh positive ways so it's been a lot of fun trying them out anyways the apple is good i think i still uh, my favorite of the three though is the brew number two um this apple is really nice up front got some nice apple honey uh notes but the the dry finish is it's definitely interesting anyways we'll see you soon with more of oh check this out so i had to upload the uh the check-in for the beer on untapped so jack i hope you're okay with me uh naming the brewery jacksaw brewing it's on untapped officially now i'm the first person that's checked these meads in uh, but they all there they all are all there, uh, they're all there and i will uh, actually probably upload a little snapshot of the check-ins at the end of this video Welcome to some more Jack Saw Brewing Mead. We are moving on to the fourth bottle that Mr. Jack has sent me called Sweet Potato. Ooh, this has got a pink. Look at that. Interesting. I love the color. You'll see my new glass that just came in today. This is my new mead glass. Um, oops, got my mouse pad meadied. Uh, yeah, check out that mead glass. A dope. It's from uh, the Leo's Mead Works. This guy does some custom glassware, and I guess he makes his own mead. But anyways, let's try it out. Oh, yeah. It's not good. It's not good. All right, let's talk to the man himself about this mead. He's, I've been on mute, so. Did you not record most of the game on that one, or? Well, the thing, the thing with Nightmare is. Oh God, he's gonna be talking. He's gonna be talking all the time. Jack, I gotta, I gotta cut in on you real quick, man. <laughs> um, hate to interrupt, but we got Jack Saul Jack on the line here with this new sweet potato mead. Uh, I was on mute while you guys were talking, and I cracked it open, poured it. Did the intro part of the video and tasted careful, it. Honey. And this is not good. I didn't think so. It is it's interesting. It's um so Jack, tell us how you made this mead. That's that's the important thing. So I read the thing about sweet potato liquor, was like, hmm, that sounds like an experiment. So, so how you the uh the starch in sweet potatoes uh, isn't easily as easily converted as the starch in regular potatoes. You need a certain enzyme for it, the amylase or however the fuck you pronounce it. So I ordered some of the enzyme. It was I got some sweet potatoes, uh, some fresh ginger root, uh, pure vanilla, and then oh Christ, what a. Uh, allspice, nutmeg, uh, cinnamon sticks, basically everything you would put into a sweet potato pie. Right. And I put it in the brewing bag, let it go for hmm. quite a few hours. Um, and then to basically, after I chopped them up to get the, kind of get the starch out of, out of the sweet potato and whatnot, added the, added the enzyme, Boiled it some, some more following the instructions I read. 
let it set overnight to let the enzyme do its work, yeah. then took the liquid, put the liquid into the carboy, and then followed the usual thing for making me, you know, a third of the way up the carboy, three pounds of honey, and then filled it the rest of the way, added the nitrate, uh, dissolved the brewer's yeast in, um, in a little bit of hot water, poured that in, popped the air stopper on, and let it go until the yeast did its job and the sediment settled at the bottom. Um, when I strained it, uh, it, when I strained it, it smelled fucking great then. By the time the fermentation process was done, not so much. Huh. I didn't... So, it was an experiment. It's obviously failed. <laughs> it probably still gets you drunk. I'll never forget it just ain't gonna taste good. Before I left the Abbey. Yeah, I'm gonna keep Child trying to drink so it. Much left to learn, is it... Is it... Is it so, does it taste sour, or...? No, it's, um... It had, like, a... It had a... I don't know. It had, like, this weird, halfway familiar taste to it. But, yeah, nothing... It's like... It, it doesn't taste like anything, to be honest, when you first when you oh. first take a drink out of it. And then you start to get maybe the sweet potato notes of it. Yeah. But... It's just weird. I know. It, it's nothing like, like, like the said, other I, the other three. Like the the apple had a very distinct apple honey mixture of a taste. The uh, brew number two is your fa my favorite out of everything I've had. That, that one was that just one. perfect. It was balanced. The, the honey wasn't overbearing. Uh, yeah, that one actually that one actually had a, when I tried tried a little bit of that after I bottled it. That one actually had a lot of sweet to it. The first brew I made, I use I had I got a it was processed honey and it was the uh, yeast that came with the brewer kit. Right. That this one uh, the what I've been using for like the apple and the apple the blueberry and the second mead and uh, well the sweet potato. That one's a brewer's yeast that's uh, supposed to be used for making sweeter, fruity drinks. Gotcha. So that's what I've been using since I used the original two pack packets that came with my carboys and everything. So yeah, and with this last mead, I used uh, raw, actual raw honey, like raw honey. And I think the next, the next two jug three have our raw Arizona wildflower honey, so. Was that the sarsaparilla? Oh, the sarsaparilla was made, the sarsaparilla was made with um, the, pro, was the Saloma wildflower honey that I used with the first brew and with the same kind of yeast. That one I'm actually kind of interested in seeing what you, what you think it tastes like, because when my dad tried it, tried a little bit, he said it kind of tasted a bit like whiskey. Okay, well, I'm going to go dump this yeah. one out and pour it then. Because, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> experimentation. Because it, it does have kind of a, the sarsaparilla one does have kind of a, a liquor taste to it. That's okay. I'm okay with the liquor taste, but you need to try some of your sweet potato meat because it's different. Yeah, the what I what I when I set some of the devil's cut out of the bottom of the out of the bottom of the carvoy, it's like that tastes weirdly sour, and it almost reminded me of a fucking sour head for a second. All right, Jack. Well, thanks for the uh, Bill Nye the Science Guy review on your meat, and uh, thank you very much for sending me the meat. The game hoarder always appreciates free alcohol. Well, minus the shipping that I had to pay, and I'll and I and I don't mind paying to ship these empty bottles back to you because I know they're not cheap. Oh, I, okay. Yummy. All right, folks. That last one was a dud. Game order couldn't do it, and I drink some shit. We're going with the sarsaparilla mead now. And excuse me, I didn't have time to clean this glass. We're in a bit of a rush. I'm trying to record some Borderlands 2. Let's see what we got here, sarsaparilla. 
Oh, this is interesting. It's got overtones of mead in the back. How dark that is. And Jack saw was right. There is a bit of a whiskey precursor and postcursor. Huh. It's definitely better than the sweet potato, but I still don't like it as much as brew number two. But I'm going to finish this one. So let's take a look at this glass. It's called Maternal Brain. It is a obviously a Metroid tribute. There's Samus. There's some dirty bubbles from an unclean glass. All right, so this is good. This has got like a nice boozy thickness uh, that kind of goes well with the thinned out mead, I feel. This is it's not a very viscous mead. You'll see it's very light and watery, but the flavor is deep, it's rich. Yep, it hits you with a slap of honey on, honey on the tongue and it's, it tastes like straight booze, whiskey, all throughout. Anyways, we'll see you soon with the final bottle of mead, the one I've been saving the last, for last, the blueberry. Welcome back crew for the last mead bottle, blueberry by Jack Saw Brewing. Ooh, frosty. Sorry if it's a bit noisy in the background. We have the uh, home theater being installed. So very excited about that. And this is my celebratory drink. You know, I get started early up in the fucking game order. Get out. So this is my Crash Bandicoot glass, if you haven't noticed. We got all the, the good guys on this side. Giving cheers to the bad guys on this side. Let's check out this blueberry yum yum. Whoa. That's interesting. That's like a sour, sour mead. Not bad though, but definitely sour. Very tart, bitter. Almost like biting into a lime or a lemon, that kind of pucker reaction. Um, I don't really get any blueberry, to be honest. It's more like drinking straight lemon juice. Um, and you get little notes of honey in there as well. You can see some of the sediment floating around there on the top too. That's good stuff. Anyways, I dig it. It's not, not bad. Uh, not in love with it. Uh, I definitely, out of the six, think brew number two is my favorite. Uh, and probably the apple was my second favorite. Anyways. That's it for the Jack Saw Brewing Mead Review. And we'll of course see you soon.